Good day to you. We're here at the uh, Neville Court uh, next to the Wren Library at Cambridge University, and we're going to reconstruct uh, Isaac Newton's uh, experiment measuring the speed of sound. Now, until uh, Isaac Newton came along, uh, people knew that uh, sound and light traveled at different speeds, but no one had ever uh, had a theory or actually, actually had been able to measure the speed of sound until Isaac Newton uh, uh, did it uh, here in the 17th century. And, and uh, uh, he used some very simple techniques, which we're going to uh, reproduce today. And to help us in this is uh, June Johnson, who uh, has, has been at Cambridge University for a long time, is a tremendous font of, uh, of historical knowledge, and she's going to uh, introduce uh, this for us and help us in the recreation of this experiment. So on to you, June. Tonight then, this is the famous place, this cloister here, where Isaac Newton did his experiment on the speed of sound. Um, you know from your very early arithmetic lessons at school that if you have time and you have distance, then you can work out speed. So uh, here we are, I mean, I'm afraid there are people walking around all the time, but I am in a moment going to clap my hands. When I clap, you will hear an echo almost immediately. So you've got to listen very carefully. It's very fast. Oh, that's another one. Anyway, the first wait, try. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I didn't get that at all. So, okay. so what we'll do is we'll... Would it help you if you got a little bit nearer? Uh, what will help is if we count down uh, uh, and then we clap and do this at the yes. same time. Yes, okay. Okay, so I will count down. Three, two, one, clap. Okay, mm -hmm. ready? Three, two, one, clap. Uh, I didn't get that either. That was too fast, okay? I heard the echo, but, but it was too yes. fast for me. Okay, let's try that one more time. I think you probably need to press it just as, just as I'm clapping. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so three, two, one. Okay, oh, now. You got a cough then, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can try one more time. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, that worked out to be about 0.23 seconds, all right? So that's how you measure uh, the speed of sound. There's a finite time between the uh, clap and the return of the echo. And there are two things you need for that. One, of course, is distance, and the, and the other is time. Now, we can measure the time for the return of the echo much more precisely than Newton himself could. This is a screenshot from a sound analysis program. This is a spectrogram with time on the horizontal axis and frequency on the vertical axis. Sound intensity is encoded in brightness. This intense vertical band is the sound from the clap. Over here is the much fainter sound from the echo. The time at which this echo comes back is 0 0.380 seconds, 380 milliseconds, after the clap. We had six claps that we could get a reliable measurement of the echo return time. Their average value was 378 milliseconds, or 0 0.378 seconds. The next thing we need to do is to be able to measure the distance from the spot where we did the clap to the wall off of which it echoed. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pace that out with, uh, with my own uh, pace, which is a little over three feet uh, for each step. And, uh, and so we'll start that right now. Okay? Okay. One, two, three, four, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four. Eight. 70, 71, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 77 paces from the end of the colonnade to this end of the colonnade. And of course, the distance it's, the sound will travel will, will be twice that. So that's 154 paces. Newton was able to measure the speed of sound so accurately because he'd figured out a clever way to measure time accurately, much more accurately than the watches that were available then. And Newton's solution, of course, was to use the simple pendulum. 
Newton had worked out the, very precisely the relationship between the length of the pendulum and the time it took to swing, that is, the period. And so by trial and error, Newton was eventually able to work out the right length of the pendulum that could give him a swing that corresponded exactly to the time between the clap and the echo. And here it is right here. Uh, if we look at this uh, closely, we can see that uh, we put a green mark in the, uh, on, the, on the string right here. And uh, this is the time, or sorry, this is the length of the pendulum that is required to give a, a swing of precisely uh, 0.38 seconds. It turns out to be a little longer, 0 0.408 seconds. So we have measures of time and distance. We can now calculate the speed of sound. Let's first calculate it with our time measurement from the spectrogram. Here we have sound traveling 126.8 meters over an average of 0 0.378 seconds. This makes the speed of sound 335.4 meters per second. Let's now calculate it with the time measurement from the pendulum. By this method, the time taken averages 0 0.408 seconds to travel 126.8 meters. This gives a calculated speed of sound of 310.8 meters per second. The nominal speed of sound in dry air at sea level is 343 meters per second. It will be slightly slower at the elevation of Cambridge. The pendulum measurement calculates the speed of sound with an error to within 9.3%. The electronic measurement does better with an error of only 2.2%. Not bad. Hey. That's good. June, thank you very much for your help. And so, sir. <laughs> the interesting thing about this is that Isaac Newton did measure this with some very, very simple techniques. Uh, what he uh, had to bring to it was, of course, knowledge of distance, being able to measure distance, and a very clever way to be able to measure time as well. And, uh, but with that, we had the first reliable measurements of the speed of sound, and, that's, uh, and that uh, set the stage for a lot of other interesting physics to come. Well, that's all for today. Uh, good day to you, and we'll see you another day. Thanks, June. Thank <laughs> you.